Hello and welcome to The Essential Truth. On tonight's episode, we'll look at the essential truth of self-worth. Uh, what are we worth? <laughs> What's our value? So, so how do you determine yeah. how much you're worth? You put a price tag on that. Whatever. God created us in his image. Okay, yeah. And a person who, who thinks less of themselves needs to really take right. you know an inner, an inner perspective again and say, look, you know, I'm created in God's yeah. image. You know, he loved me so much. And as you just said, that's the story of God, that he found a way to, to save us. What's the essential truth of my self-worth? Yeah. Well, it comes from God. God created us, so we have value. He put us over all the all of his creation. Uh, then we messed up, but he still valued us. That's and right. still he loved found us. a way of redeeming us, yeah. didn't he? So much that he came yeah. to rescue us himself as Jesus Christ offered us that pardon all we got to do is just take it grab like, it like it's you a said free. it's free act on it yeah, yeah. act it's on free. it Go don't have to it. pay nothing for it this is a podcast where we are in pursuit of truth we take a look at the world around us we try to make sense of what's going on and we do it all from a biblical viewpoint we use the truths that god has revealed to us in the scriptures and the bible uh, to try and make sense of things I think one of the saddest things about this pandemic that we got going on it seems to be uh, taking a, a mental toll on us. Mm. Uh, of course, you can see that manifested in a lot of ways, but I know the I just noticed the suicide rate had uh, ticked up mm-hmm. uh, pretty dramatically. Really, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what maybe it's loss of jobs, loss of just anxiety in general. Yeah, yeah. isolation, isolation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People's people <clears throat> felt. A lot of times that they weren't essential. Yeah, like right. Just yeah. every everyday routines or yeah. just have been, you know, so turned changed, upside turned down. upside down. Yeah. 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 I yeah. saw one report where they talked about the people who were contemplating suicide had just oh yeah had gone gone wild. And I think these uh, suicide hotlines, which I think are good and help people, mm-hmm. yeah. they're just overwhelmed. Yeah. Right. I know yeah. we were talking before. And I think uh, the the girls I think oh, you yeah. hear and females are uh, high, school high school, teenage. high school age. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's really be a really real high. problem. Yeah, yeah. Really high. Don't don't you think a lot of people who are depressed and contemplate those kind of actions? It's probably because they're looking at their self worth and yeah. they feel like it's diminished. Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah. I know, think so. And I think that isolation, you know, you, you're you're not mm-hmm. out. You know, we're in a time of holidays, and, no, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, we just spent one of our bigger ones, and we're not around our family and our well, friends as much as we would be because government mm-hmm. tells us we can't be. Right. And, and even when family can't come together, sometimes I think it could cause a feeling, well, I'm not worth enough for people to come, you know, and their yeah, self-worth. Sure, is, sure. I don't know. It's an odd thing, but, but no doubt I think people are – uh, really need to take a hard look at yeah. what the value of their life is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what are we worth? Uh, what's our self-worth? Yeah, I think that's a good topic for us to discuss. I think so. Uh, the essential truth of self-worth. Yeah. What are we worth? Uh, we're going to turn to the scriptures, use the Bible, to make sense of the world around us. That's what we do on this show, The Essential Truth, and look at that topic of self-worth. What does the Bible say about that? Uh, we'll get into that and more, but we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. All right, Steve, we just drew some names to give away the hat, oh. like I talked oh, about right. last yeah, week. Yeah, I remember that. Although I just realized uh, uh, some people said the ladies don't like trucker hats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's what? up with that, do you? <laughs> Tracy, she commented last week. Yeah. Said, I've said got a the, daughter that would wear one. Yeah, she said the ladies wanted T-shirts. Oh, I guess I'm about to expand uh, your uh, inventory. I of guess some so. Sort, so we'll, we'll get some T-shirts made, and we'll get Tracy the first one. But I don't know what lady wouldn't want a trucker hat. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but I do know some people were commenting. They got a hold of me. They were having trouble getting signed up for our email list. Okay. Uh, what we do is, if you watch the show, uh, if you want to sign up for our weekly email, it's like a newsletter, I guess you might call it. I'll send that out weekly, but we'll put like show notes in there. Things from the show. So if you're watching and we breeze through a scripture and you didn't catch which one it was, we'll have all those on there so you can look at them. Uh, or if you're, you know, want to put together a class for a church group or something like that, you can take our outline and you know sort of be a guide for you sure. to to go through there. I know a lot of people would would like that. A lot of people always ask me. They say, "What was that one verse you brought up?" And mm-hmm. 
you know, you might've missed it, but you can get those show notes. And if we talk about some news story or something like that, I might put, put that in there. So if you want to get it, uh, there's a link you can click on to sign up for it, but I've had people been telling me it hadn't been working. So what we're going to do is you can just email us directly. The essential truth at yahoo.com. Just send me an email, put in the subject or in the body or whatever that you want to sign up for the, for the newsletter for our weekly newsletter. And I'll, I'll just add you on there directly. Okay. So that'll make things a little easier. Yeah. And uh, But we did when some people did get through. We, yeah. we drew in a couple names and give away a couple. Good deal. But we'll do the same thing this week. If you sign up, go to theessentialtruth at yahoo.com or send me an email at that address. We'll get you signed up, and then we'll give away some more hats. Also, don't forget anywhere you watch the podcast to like and subscribe it. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can click the bell. That way you mm-hmm. get notified every time we put out more contact and on more content as my daughter says you got to slam the like button <laughs> you don't just hit it you got to slam it that's what the youtubers say now so anyway slam that like button we'll, we'll get back to the show all right so we'll look at the essential truth of self-worth uh what are we worth <laughs> what's our value so, so how do you determine <laughs> how much you're worth you put a price tag on that every, every year when uh i want to borrow some money for to operate my business uh my banker says uh you need to fill out this paper that determines how much you're worth uh-huh. yeah yeah so, let's know how many things you got right yeah yeah i mean mm-hmm. so that's that's one that's one uh i guess uh way that people gauge yeah their worth. Used to be some gentlemen i knew growing up you know just with a handshake their their self-worth yeah. was you know worth quite a bit i guess at least in word yeah. That's true. But, you know, I noticed there wasn't any place on the, <coughs> the form to fill out. For a handshake. For a handshake. And, and <laughs> it's, it's all got to be dollars or a property. Yeah. Well, uh, money money comes up right away then. Yeah. Yeah. There's <clears throat> When I think about worth, I think about uh, I'm in the service industry myself. So mm-hmm. what are my services worth? Yeah, yeah there's no doubt you uh, got to yeah. put a pencil and paper to <clears throat> that, right. don't you? That's yeah. exactly right. Different. For your different, time. Different services, mm-hmm. I guess, have different yeah. value, different yeah. knowledge. And honestly, if you apply for a job, you know, if you're not self-employed and you're going to apply for a job, mm. one of the things that you go over with your potential employer is, All right. yeah, how much you going to How make? much am I worth? Yeah. You know? yeah. What are you going <laughs> to pay me yeah. for my services? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. trading my time for service. So that has a value. Yeah. yeah. Well, that seems reasonable. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times we think about our potential value. Uh, maybe we invest in our future. Yeah, know, education. Uh, education. Yeah, I've a got a bunch way. of it. Yeah. yeah, put in put in some time at college and build those skill sets up. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, yeah. yeah, we're pushing uh, <coughs> vocational right now. You know, that's really big. Yeah, uh, they used to. I don't see those commercials as much as I used to, but they used to have a commercial that said how much more valuable you right. would be if you had a college education. Mm-hmm. Now I don't think that's true. I, yeah. I think <laughs> if you have a good trade. You're worth more than. <laughs> I think that's because a lot of those colleges got sued for yeah. <laughs> false, yeah. false yeah. advertising. Yeah. <laughs> that may have been what happened there. So, I know at times past that uh, we've actually uh, tried to put value on on uh, on a life. I guess. Well, you know, one place you see that is in a uh, court case. Right. If, sure. if somebody's life is taken, you know. Well, by accident or otherwise, yeah, look at, you'll, you'll uh, see somebody tried to establish. Well, what was my potential yeah, value for my lifetime? Yeah, look and, at your yeah. uh, look at your insurance. I mean, insurance yeah. has that uh, yeah. built yeah. into it. Yeah. You know, for for certain accidents. Yeah, I just heard a guy. <coughs> he was over in London. He's a big time economist, and he was trying to put a, a, I guess, a price on, with all the lockdowns and shutdowns. He was trying to say, what's the you know what's the economic. Uh, figures that surround this at what point does shutting down due to health cause well, I, more harm than mm. well i think that's a big debate that's going on mm-hmm. in our country you sure. know how, how much and, and you hear people get emotional and they say well yeah. you're going to say that uh, right. life is more valuable than yeah. your well i don't know you know <laughs> well he got banned on cens- <laughs> uh, censored on twitter and everybody shut him down it was very controversial but 
when I listened to the interview, he went on to talk about safety regulations. Well, yeah. that's how OSHA Speed comes limits. Limits. That's right. exactly, yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, you know, these are all, that's how these are mm. all defined. Yeah. I, mean, I remember in uh, at, at, at UK, I mean, I got into mm-hmm. a discussion with a, right. a professor there that, uh, <laughs> you know, trying to place a value on a human life. And I just, you know, my, my philosophy is there, there is no value. Right. I mean, <clears> if, if I, you lose a life, any life, yeah. you know, I, I can't, I couldn't imagine you know, yeah. saying, well, they were worth this much to me. Yeah. And, I mean, because that person will no longer be in in yeah. in, in <clears throat> life in general. Yeah. It, His it, argument was, though, if, we, if you drop the speed limit on the interstate to 35 miles an hour, we would save more how lives? many more lives? Tons of lives. But yeah. think of the lost commerce. Yeah. It yeah. would be, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, it gets tricky when you, yeah. you get into this. Well, actually, I mean, put a value on life. honestly, that's the way, like OSHA, that's how they yeah, come up with safety, safety regulations. regulations. Same way they say, the look, if, if we uh, label this mm-hmm. as a safety hazard, it's going to cost so many dollars. Oh, yeah. But mm-hmm. Productivity goes mm-hmm. down. Productivity. Yeah. So how many lives they say? And they did that. I remember the debate. You all are too young for that, I guess, with seatbelts. Right. But, uh, you know, I, li- I lived in a time before seatbelts. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that debate was there, and you know, they had to value those. And oh. that's a big discussion. Yeah. Uh, after September 11th, yeah, yeah, that that changed. Uh, I yeah. think there was a an issue that that came up as a right. result of that. Well, well they, legal they, issue. Yeah. They had, if you Some remember the, issues. I think the government set aside a, mm-hmm. a big uh, fund. They call right. it a compensation fund, right. Mm-hmm. Right. and they had Dickens. to determine how they were going to give that to people. Yeah, what that what did they come up with? Wasn't it? Uh, I think it was two hundred fifty thousand for each person. That mm-hmm. lost their life, right? But then, uh, then they said uh, some had, people are more valuable. Like if you had a child, you <laughs> were worth spouse. fifty thousand more. Yeah. If you had a spouse, mm-hmm. you were worth fifty thousand more. Right. <laughs> All right. I, I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting when you really. Get, get into, into those, you know. yeah, gets, but again, that you know, these are all precedents that sort of set those things or where we are right now with the the current right, pandemic. Right. You know, I mean, people say, you know, well, you know, I'm going to be off or I'm going to be sick or I'm in a hospital and, and I can't provide. So there's right, you know, right. there's there's truth to some of those things, but mm-hmm. still, I mean, we're we're talking about how do you value yourself? Right. I mean, I guess most people probably value themselves more than what they really are worth. Yeah. <laughs> What was that old saying? If you could buy a man for what he was worth, uh, sell him for what he thought he was worth, worth, you'd yeah, be a rich, rich man. man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's buying, buying low, selling high. Yeah. <laughs> that's the secret, isn't it? Well, we some, uh, I guess some scientists broke down what what we're made out of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a body. Yeah, this is right yeah. at my. This yeah. right be right, right at my wife's alley right here, <laughs> talking about the scientific aspect of the components of the human body. Yeah, they. Uh, I cleaned out a barn the other day. It had a bunch <laughs> of junk metal in it. Yeah. Divided it all out into what kind of metal it was and weighed it up and mm-hmm. came up with a value. Yeah. Well, I think. So could we do that with a. I, I, well, looked, I, mean, I looked on the internet and we're there's. made up of atoms, aren't we? Yeah. There's actually things. people that have well, broken calculated. down what an average body size. They said yeah. how much oxygen, carbon, do, carbon, hydrogen, mm-hmm. phosphorus, mm-hmm. all the different the elements. elements. Uh-huh. I, I don't I forgot how many there were that yeah. were made up of. Hmm. But they took a, they took a average person's body. And said, if we broke that body down into the basic elements, mm-hmm. and then we had to pay for those elements, mm-hmm. what it would cost us. What it would cost. And I think this uh, data genics is one that I looked at. They came up with a figure that all the elements in your body would be worth about $160. Mm-hmm. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Well, you're, <laughs> you're actually worth more than that because, yeah. you know, if you think about a cowhide. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and did you know, actually, a lot of these uh, processing plants, they make more money out of the cowhide than they do. Say, I, I don't think uh, ours would, would yeah. probably be but, nearly as valuable as a cowhide would be. Well, if, if you based it on the price of a cowhide, oh, yeah. okay. an average person's hide would be worth about $3.50. Yeah. yeah. What was that? Brings us up to one hundred and sixty-three fifty. Yeah. <laughs> if you broke, yeah. well, that's illegal, though, to uh, sell your body like yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you. but, you know, uh, actually, yeah, yeah. I got to thinking about that. I went to the dentist one time, and uh, they told me what it was going to cost to replace a tooth. Mm. And I thought, wow, if I could sell all my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. Well, that would be a lot of money. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. I used to listen to this guy on uh, the Internet. <clears throat> he was a conspiracy theorist, so they said. But <clears throat> he started talking about selling uh, aborted babies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I remember this was years ago. And uh, I actually quit listening to this guy. 
it angered me to the point I was like, this Which guy, is, is, yeah. he's totally probably lost his ones, mind. Some of the ones that I've listened yeah, to as probably. well. Just and pretty, I thought, just, just disgusting. Yeah, I was like, this guy is nuts. <clears throat> he's lost it. And then, uh, to my surprise, a few years later, yeah, uh, we had, uh, what was the group that went undercover? Project Veritas. Yeah. yeah that came and out. I actually discovered this was true. Yeah. This was uh, not yeah. a conspiracy theory. When yeah. they Planned Parenthood? Oh, uh, yeah. They yeah. went undercover in Planned Parenthood and, and caught them. Talking about, red-handed. Yeah. Talking, you know, talking, talking about, about selling, selling body parts. Yeah. 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 That's uh, scary. Yeah. We were just doing this as a funny little exercise calculating the worth you of know, a body, but that's. You know, that's kind of ironic that some people could come up to the conclusion that an right. unborn child is worthless. Yeah. Yeah. No value, so we can abort it. Yeah. But we then, can kill it. Uh-huh. And then they turn right around and say, well, there's, there's value, some value in, in selling some. Yeah. Well, it's you know, and, and you think about it, you know, uh, the whole debate, well, don't want to get deep in it, but, you know, it's, it's a mass of sales, they'll say. Mm. But obviously, yeah. it's not a mass of sales yeah. when they're talking about parts. That's right. You know, and that's the thing that disgusted me. Going back to the the original time yeah. that I'd heard heard this. Well, what was that that David wrote in Psalms about? That uh, oh yeah, God yeah. He, knew he him. He knew him in one Psalms one thirty nine in the womb. Yeah, so he knew him in he the womb. Knew him. Yeah, knew his innermost parts, his yeah. innermost workings. Yeah, before he was even born. Yeah, so valuable. Yeah, people are valuable. Yeah, even the unborn mm-hmm. are valuable. I guess really when you <clears throat> when you break it down, our value comes, I guess, in some ways by how how your worldview. Uh, yeah. uh, if you different worldviews have different ways of uh, mm-hmm. putting value on. Well, you know, you life. you kind of talked about a little bit a while ago, like your service. All right. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's kind of an economic. If somebody's going to hire yeah. you, you yeah. know, they've got yeah. a they may have a different perspective or a view of what All right. you know you're worth versus what right. you think you're worth or. You know what that's worth to them. Mm-hmm. So, from an economic point of view, I guess someone who has uh, more experience or more knowledge to create uh, more growth or wealth, I guess they do have more value in some sense. I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, I keep thinking about again. That's the, the worldview of right, it. Yeah. Right. If you you're know? if you're looking at it from yeah. the economic yeah, worldview. Right. Yeah. So how do, how do you value someone else? I, I I guess what's on my mind is I'm still thinking about the election, and <laughs> yeah. there's. You know, a politician values you for your vote. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, nobody's spending any money on advertising trying to get me to vote for them now because no, it's all over. It's all over. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. If you calculated the massive amount of money that was spent, uh, I'd like to see that divided out by the number of votes. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. They put a pretty high value on that. Yeah, yeah. person's vote on that vote. Yeah. yeah. Some That's people, true. some people, may even got paid double. Yeah, <laughs> hey, maybe one point three. But uh, the uh, evolutionary <laughs> worldview is one that I just I keep coming back to. I've been battling this point. How can you, <clears throat> if you're an evolutionist, really, and we're all just a accident, an accident, just a then, bushy mess of yeah. stuff that just happened. To, I don't know what. Then what value do we really have? Yeah, that's an odd know. thing, isn't it? You know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I try to wrap my mind around it. Of course, I know uh, <clears throat> they're trying to rebrand the, uh, the theory of evolution yeah. right yeah. now because there's a question they can't answer, and it basically comes back to this. If we're just a big accident, then we have no purpose. Right. right. So they're trying to uh, you know, rebrand evolution to say we somehow, uh, I don't know, evolved <laughs> a purpose. A purpose? I well, don't know. I, I think you're right because if the basic theory of a uh, Darwinist evolution is that survival of the fittest. Yeah. yeah. So if we're at the top of the chain, right. it's because else, it's because we've outsmarted we everything made, else. We made it. And we're That's there, right. and so the only value we have is being at the top of the chain. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And right. nothing's going to knock us off. Yeah. We should just eliminate everything below us. And yeah. yeah. Well, I've probably spent more time than I should trying to figure out the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That madness, but <clears throat> I don't know. Materialist. That's sort of another thing in the same vein. Materialist meaning all there all there is is what we got. We're just the material. It. We're just a collection of yeah. those elements, I guess, that we're made up of. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Industrialists, we're just a cog in the machine, maybe. Yeah. What we can produce. Uh, government views us as taxpayers. Sure, yeah. makes sense. On the government, we mentioned politicians look at us as voters. 
uh, businessmen, little business people look mm-hmm. at us as a consumer, That's right. customer. You know, one of the big ones that I hear, or maybe maybe it's just because I'm thinking that way, but I hear these people that call themselves uh, ecological yeah. thinkers or green mm-hmm. thinkers. And, uh, you know, what I'm hearing is, is they say there's – too many people. Too mm-hmm. many of us. And we're, yeah. we're, we're our problem. We <laughs> they, are the problem. I we are heard the them problem. Say that, yeah. yeah, and there's some have gone so far as saying that there's a certain segment of society, once you get that particular mm-hmm. age or whatever, that you so, know, it's, yeah. I don't want to say necessarily eliminate yeah. you, but, you know, you are you no longer have any value. Yeah. What was that? When that Rahm Emanuel's uh, brother? Brother, I forgot his he's name. He's a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. He's Biden's top health official. Yeah, he basically said yeah. that after 75, you're yeah. – not much value to you. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, Which is a shame yeah. because, you know, other cultures value, uh, you know, the experience yeah. of older people. They yeah. value the uh, the things that they can bring to the table, especially if they had a, a business acumen or, right. or something along yeah. that line. That I, I agree with. I think that's a ridiculous yeah. uh, conclusion to come to. Yeah, especially when a lot of people voted for 78-year-old uh, Joe I Biden. Yeah. I wondered he already how, fits his own demogra- <laughs> that demographic there, didn't he? I wondered how he felt about that, man, he's 78. But uh, I guess he picked him for his top health guy, mm-hmm. so he didn't hold it personal, I guess. <laughs> he's one of the elites, so he's a he's immune to that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. But really, I guess when you look at it, we, we sort of think, what can we contribute? Yeah. yeah that's how we – Some people value – in that way, and yeah. and actually, Maybe that's a decent way to look at it in some way. Yeah. I, I think actually, there's yeah. we were talking about a biblical view. I think mm-hmm. yeah. God understood that we should be a light, uh, that mm-hmm. we should be salt. Mm-hmm. How did he say that? Was that in Matthew five? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He talked yeah. about salt oh, of yeah. the earth. Matthew five thirteen mm-hmm. through sixteen he says, "You're the salt of the earth." Yeah. But what? But he says, "What good is salt if it's lost its flavor?" So you that's influence value. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're the light of the world, he said in 14, mm-hmm. like a city on a hilltop. Yeah, we've got a song so, about can, that. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. don't put that light under a basket. So what <coughs> value is there to light if you don't use it? Right, right. What value is there to salt if you don't? So I think there is some truth that we we can value our contribution to mm-hmm. the world around us, to yeah. our society, to, you know, to the church. Well, yeah, I think so too. Uh, Psalms 8. I think this is a, an important passage in this discussion here. The passage we looked uh, up where the yeah the writer there was uh, he sort of asked an odd question. If, if you read through Psalms, I'd, I'd it'd be a good one to look up and, and read. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he asked the question. Uh, he said, "We're mere mortals." In verse four, what who are who are we that you should even think about it? Is what he said basically. Yeah. About. He was saying God. That's why, right. That's know, who he's God's talking about. God's so much higher right. than us. Right. Why is he even? Why does he value us? Why is he even value us? Yeah. Uh, but he goes on to to talk about some mm-hmm. of that. Uh, and we'll look at it a little further here in a minute. But uh, that, that's an interesting yeah, uh, thought. Well, I, by <clears throat> comparison, I guess. When I just think that the writer God. there. Well, I think the conveyed com- a, a strong message. Yeah, and I, and I think the comparison is what you said about view. We're talking about how we view right. versus yeah. how God God views. Yeah, and true. and that's the comparison. Yeah. So uh, the psalmist was, he was mm-hmm. saying, look, as a man, you know, we view people from a man's standpoint, mm-hmm. and here you are God. You're you're the, the power mm-hmm. of creation, mm-hmm. you know. Think about the all the, the glory that God mm-hmm. possesses. The wisdom. And the wisdom that he has, yeah. and here he's created us and mm-hmm. thought we had value. Yeah. Yeah, he gives us the value. He gives right. us our value. Well, and I think that goes back too to that that Psalms one thirty nine that we talked about. You know, where David was, you know, the writer there talking about God knowing him. But you know, the whole gist of that passage too is about you know that God's power. You know that He's got that glory, uh, the wisdom. You yeah. know that 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 who God is, and He thought so much of us. You know, through at the beginning of the creation, yeah. and no doubt, you know. Uh, God created us as the ultimate part of his creation. Yeah. And uh, that was valuable to God mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we were created like that. Yeah. Well, let's just look at it a little further. We'll just do it now. We had it, I think, Mark, to look at later. But uh, he talks about there in Psalms 8. Uh, he said, What are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings? 
you should even care for them or value them. I guess is another way you might say that. Why does God even value us? Who are we? But then he says, yet you made them only, talking them being us, humans, Mm -hmm. yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge over everything you made, putting all things under their authority, like the fox and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, everything that swims in the currents. Mm -hmm. So it's God who uh, valued us and basically put us in charge of the creation. uh, creation. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Which again, we've it got is. that same look back in you know over in Genesis. You know, we're yeah. we have dominion. Mm-hmm. That's right. We have that dominion, and yeah. that and that just isn't mm-hmm. one person or a group of people. That's uh, every uh, crea- every uh, person God created uh, yeah, has right. that value. So if you're trying to figure out your value, we start to get into the biblical point of view. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can start to see it starts to take shape. God holds us in high value. He created us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's probably what Job had in mind when he wrote in Job, the seventh chapter, verse 17 and 18. He says, what is man mm-hmm. that you should exalt him, that you yes. should set it or your heart on him, mm-hmm. uh, that you should visit him every morning right. and test him every moment? Set your heart on him there really means God values us. Yeah. 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 And, and you can understand the value that God had in man looking at all of creation and we go back to the very beginning when God created. Mm-hmm. Uh, the yeah. ultimate of his creation was man. Yeah. yeah. And and he cr- created all this thing. And, of course, we know the story that man mm-hmm. basically disobeyed God and turned on him. Right. Wow. And God, in his wisdom at one point, man got so corrupt that he was willing to destroy it all. Start all over again, wasn't he? And then evidently he looked and he he loved and valued man so much that he said, I'm going to make provisions yeah. to yeah. save man. Right. Yeah, Came up with a different yeah. plan, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And that is the story of the Bible. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that story there, that's, <clears throat> that captures it. Well, I know we've had this discussion before, but I think it's important to bring this point up again. Mm-hmm. But God created us in his image. Okay, yeah. And a person who, who thinks less of themselves needs to really take, right. you know, an inner an inner. Pers- a perspective again and say, look, you know, I'm created in God's yeah. image. Yeah. You know, he loved me so much. And as you just said, that's the story of God that he found a way to, to save us. Yeah. I or mean, the story of the Bible. That that image is a living soul. Yeah. I mean, we talked about that last week, mm-hmm. you know, that, that we are eternal. Yeah. And if really, if, if you, and I understand, you know, everybody gets depressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody gets down. And sometimes we all, or like the psalmist said, you know, who am I that, you know, when I look at God, you know. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is, is that we need to understand that we have tremendous value because well, God gave it to us. That's right. Well, it was even a little hard for me to read Psalms 8, verse 5, when it said you made them only a little lower than God. Mm-hmm. That was a little hard for me to read because yeah. I maybe I don't value myself enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I'm, right. I'm a little <laughs> lower than God. Well, I mean, uh, we are yeah. valuable because God created us. Made in his image. And and the problem is, as we go back to the things that we talked about at first, uh-huh. we look at our net worth, we uh-huh. looked at our potential earning power, we right. looked at what and our contribution, and we say, well, that's my value. You know, or that's, what, that's what society says. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And we buy says. into that. Sure we do. Yeah. Right. Sure we do. Or... You know, I'm I'm not as good looking as someone else, yeah. or I don't you know I don't wear the same kind of clothes that mm. other people wear, and so people look at us differently, yeah. or they don't. And again, it it, it hurts our self esteem, hurts our hearts, and ultimately hurts our self worth. Yeah. Or maybe if, if a person as they age or if they get sick, they start to think, I've lost I'm my value. I'm, 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 I'm a burden. I'm a burden yeah. on people. That's right. just not true. Even from that materialist point of view, where we looked at sort of breaking down the elements that make up a body. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> being made in the image of God means there's more to us. That's than right. Hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen. and yeah. all the other That's minerals right. that are inside of right. us. In fact, uh, the scriptures refer to our body as just a tent or yeah, a, right. a temporary. And and think about that. What you just said. That's that's the physical. Right. Everything yeah. we just discussed early on in this uh, in this discussion was is, was the physical. Yeah. yeah. So we're so much more than just yeah. Mm-hmm. Just that, where I mean, we have a spirit that never ceases to exist. Yeah. We did a whole uh, podcast, whole episode on that. Mm-hmm. 
That's right. I'll put Just a recent. Link, yeah, yeah. I'll put a link yeah. to it where we talked about what it means to be eternal mm-hmm. and our soul. So, uh, I mean, that's what, what's the value of something that's eternal? Yeah. That's uh, going to be a pretty pretty high price tag. That's right. And God values it. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't want a single person. Yeah. To. No. To, to perish, you know, the, the ultimate death. No. And, and that's really the dilemma that mm-hmm. man finds himself in because mm-hmm. sin really devalues yeah. us before God. Well, yeah. That, I mean, that's really what well, sin is. Yeah, you go back in Genesis, I mean, yeah. we, 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 we found out we had a sin problem pretty quick, and then, you know, it just it transpired from there. That's right. And, and in the sight of God, when we sin, mm-hmm. we really devalue our relationship with God. Mm-hmm. And uh, God made a way to correct that, Yeah, you know, because he valued us so much. All right. Yeah, that would uh, uh, sin would have been the, the ultimate problem for us, uh, because uh, there's no way out of that. I mean, God created us to uh, to serve Him and mm-hmm. be obedient to Him. That's when right. we failed in that uh, goal that He'd set for us, our primary mission, I suppose we were mm-hmm. devalued. We were, yeah. But well, He still saw worth and value in it. I, I like the uh, passage in uh, Matthew. Chapter six, yeah. When uh, really the question was, what's man worth to God? Mm. You know, how how much is he worth to God? And in Matthew, uh, is it six? I mm-hmm. believe six. Yeah, that's 20, the one about the six sparrows. Yeah, he he talked about uh, how God took care of the birds, mm-hmm. and he said, "Aren't we worth more than the sparrows?" Do you have that verse, Matthew six twenty six? That's I was looking here. Uh, yeah, here we go. Matthew six twenty six. It says, uh, uh, "Look at the birds; they do not plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you more favor? Aren't you far of far more value yeah. to Him than they are?" No, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's it's pretty, uh, yeah, pretty that, amazing. Yeah. I mean, he takes care of those. Right. He says he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Then he goes on and talks about the lilies of the field yeah. and how mm-hmm. God takes care of these things. Yeah. Um, over in Luke 13, that's an interesting story yeah. there where Jesus uh, talks about the value of a person that people undervalued, I guess. Yeah, there's. Uh, I think the narrative there is that there was a woman that, mm-hmm. I forgot, how, maybe like 18 years she had some problem mm-hmm. or something, long-time problem, and it was on the Sabbath day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Jesus healed her of her sickness. And the uh, religious people of the day came to Jesus and they said, you know, breaking the rule. How can yeah. you do that? <laughs> yeah. How can you, all those how aha can, moments how can you do this on the you. Sabbath? Yeah. Mm. And uh, he turns to them and he points out, don't you have a donkey tied mm. in your stall? And he said, didn't you lead that donkey to some water and feed today? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he said, don't you think this woman's life is worth more than that donkey? Mm. So it was allowed in their eyes. It was allowed That's, for them to take care of their animals. Yeah. But when Jesus showed compassion on another human being, they yeah. Yeah. and he tried to point yeah. out, you know, she's you know, mm. far more worth value, value yeah. than, than yeah. And than he's getting back to, donkey. Was. It's getting back to what we're trying to say is how, why does God value a person? Right. And he said it was more valuable than anything. Right. Sort of that hypocrisy. Yeah. yeah it? it is. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, but uh, I think the ultimate, I guess, way we see that God values us, the way we know is that he came to us uh, as a man, Jesus Christ, uh, to He wanted to us rescue to correct, us. Yeah, yeah, to rescue us, to find yeah. how, uh, salvation. You we know, talked about that was, sin problem that went all the way back to the beginning that devalued us in yes. a sense. Uh, God still saw value in us. We know he did because he came and, and to rescue us. John 3.16. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. all know oh, that yeah. one, yeah. That's the, yeah. Yeah, John three sixteen. we all know, for God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What does he mean but by I've, world? Uh, Is he talking about the trees and the animals and all uh, that? 
No. He didn't, well, I mean, he didn't come to save those things. That's right. He came to save mankind. Yeah, mankind. Human beings, yeah. yeah. But I think verse 17 is important one. Yeah. Uh, that, that Sometimes goes we on skip with that. over that I, one. Well, we, we do. But I, I think in this discussion, I think it's an important one because mm-hmm. it goes on to say, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn mm-hmm. the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm-hmm. And I think it's I think it's hard and difficult for people, again, when you're – you know, we've you've been in isolation as we have and, and all the situations that go along with, um, you know, feeling less than yourself, um, you know, and, and for our discussion, you know, we condemn ourselves. You know, we, we do that. I think that's a, a selfish part of this yeah. whole discussion, you know, in a way is that, you know, that we really wind up condemning ourselves, even though we look at it from the worldview that it's more the outside that's doing it. And it's really not, it, it's, it's us doing it to ourselves. It, and that's what that said. You know, it's, it's just the opposite of that. Don't you think a lot of people, even when they read about God and salvation and how he values us, they look at God as, well, God's coming to identify my sin and he's going to get me. Yeah. yeah. And, and this verse you're pointing out just points the opposite. Uh, that's said, exactly right. He said he didn't come to condemn, condemn me. He, he didn't come to catch me in my sin. He came to save me mm-hmm. from my sin. That's right. Hold yeah. on to those thoughts. we got some more verses uh, we're going to get to that show uh, our value from a scriptural perspective. We'll get to those right after this break. We'll be right back to this week's episode of The Essential Truth. But first, we just want to remind you, you can listen to all of our episodes anywhere you get podcasts, or you can watch all of our episodes and view other content that we have available on our YouTube channel. I'll put links to both in the description and in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe anywhere you get our podcast. And don't forget to like and share this video. Thank you so much. And now, back to the show. All right, so we're back. So we know John 3.16 points out God loves us. We know that because he came to save us, rescue us. Not to condemn us, but to save rescue us. us. Yeah. Uh, Romans 5, 8 through 9. Yeah, we referenced that already. It's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. But God demonstrates his His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mm-hmm. Much more than having been now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Mm-hmm. So uh, even when we were still in the mess we were in, God saw value in us and uh, came yeah. to rescue us. You know, you know that that's always, uh, when you read that verse... Mm-hmm. Yeah, God demonstrated his love toward us and while we were yet sinners. Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about how difficult it is to love somebody that hates you uh, or yeah. to love somebody that mistreats you? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's easy for me to love people Well, I thought Ed had a good, uh, me. I was mm-hmm. reading back through his uh, thing from Sunday, and it was talking about prayer, and, yeah. you know, and he sort of broke it down. I think he had an acronym, ACTS, or whatever, and, and one of the things about uh, – when I was talking about praying for your enemies, yeah. you know, people who've done harm to you, you know, mm-hmm. any of those things. Yeah. yeah, it makes it difficult. And here God demonstrated mm-hmm. right. how much he valued us mm-hmm. because not because we were saying, God, come and help us. Right. When mm-hmm. we rejected God yeah. in our sin, yeah. he still loved us and valued us so much that he mm-hmm. sent God to save yeah. us. Well, I'm just going to point out another just a real quick mm-hmm. point of, yeah. of, of on verse 10, it says, For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we're still his enemies. But I just I bring that up because, you know, and I, I'm being an educator, you know, I mean, you, you know certain students that you see and they've, uh, you know, you see them walking down the hallway or, and you can only imagine right now if they're sitting at home so isolated and what they're thinking about themselves, they need a friend. That's right. And, you know, God right there, I mean, he just yeah. said, you know, I mean, he, he, he can be that ultimate friend yeah. to them. Yeah, I read that verse a few weeks ago for mm-hmm. our, uh, when we had the Lord's Supper together. I thought it was such a unique way of putting it, mm-hmm. yeah. having our friendship, friendship. restored with God. Right, a, right. And he's never uh, quarantined from us. <laughs> no, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Here's another one, Ephesians 2, verse 4 and 5. But God, who is rich in mercy... Because of his great love which he, uh, with which he loves us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we've been saved. Mm-hmm. Uh, so rich in mercy. You know, these are Yeah, and it brings out that ideal of grace, mm-hmm. and that's understanding how much God values us because grace is something that we don't merit. 
we don't deserve. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But he's willing to bring it to us because he values us so much. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what it is in the end. It's a, his value. He values it. First John 4, 9 and 10. In this, the love of God was manifest toward us or shown to us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that he might, uh, that we might live through him. Yeah. And this, in this is love, not that we love God, but he has loved us and sent his son uh, to be the perpetuation of our sins. Yeah. So he yeah. took care of our sins. Yeah, powerful word there, well, isn't it? Those are you know, propitiation. You know, yeah. Stand in for us. Mm-hmm. Well, the bottom line is Jesus left the glories of heaven. Mm-hmm. Uh, he became a man. Mm-hmm. Lowered himself in his standing. You know, mm-hmm. He lowered himself down. And uh, willingly went to a cross. Yeah. So we've got so, a song. So, so if you're trying to establish how much something's worth, All right. it's what you would do for it. Right. I mean, you know, you think mm-hmm. in, in our own human terms, you think about, well, it's something so valuable for me. What means? Mm-hmm. What extreme would I go to to save it? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I right. might I might <clears throat> jeopardize myself. And there's yeah. actually a passage in the scriptures that says for a just man, yeah. some mm-hmm. would mm-hmm. might like dare to die. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, but oh. for somebody that doesn't right. even care about you, right. and here he says that he left the mm-hmm. perfection of heaven <coughs> yeah, to come here and ultimately die. Yeah, we are. We've got a song that we sing, and uh, it's called "What Is He Worth to Your Soul." Not to summarize our discussion for tonight, but I think it's appropriate right now that I, I pulled it up. And yeah. It says, "Jesus, the Lord, laid His glory aside, sinners to save and make whole. Freely He died, our transgressions to hide. What is He worth to your soul?" Mm-hmm amazing so So, yeah i mean it goes on and and it 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 basically says what you just did yeah so so what are what are we worth to god we're worth everything to him yeah well i mean i I think it's a good point you brought up uh because think about how much we'll we're willing to give and sacrifice to make money or to to have fame or you know we'll 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 sacrifice a lot you know we just Recently, we went through. We things are valuable. We went through Veterans Day. Oh yeah, and, and we yeah. celebrated that. And, and what we did, we Ultimate looked at sacrifice we looked at those, those people that would give gave. a sacrifice mm. for something they believed in so dearly is freedom. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, and people right now want to give away our freedom oh, yeah. so easily without doing nothing. Uh, well, they forget I that mean, that was paid for. With oh yeah, yeah. and that, that patriots. Yeah, that yeah. bothers me. And, and, and then you really think about me. you know, in comparison to what God, He's willing to give up heaven mm. all right yeah to save us yeah that's it shows it yeah. demonstrates as that passage yeah. said yeah. it yeah. demonstrates yeah. uh the value that we have yeah uh, in god's sight uh what was first peter one or was it verse 17 we talked about silver and gold it, mm-hmm. you know we, we think about redeeming something with mm-hmm. money money yeah right. the physical yeah yeah but uh, what he was saying is god paid a ransom he called it yeah, uh, to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors, it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which loses its value, but it was paid with Christ's blood, the blood of a spotless lamb they called Christ, the Creator, yeah. mm-hmm. so, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what was our value? The the life of perfect Jesus Christ was. Yeah. Uh, was he gave up to? It goes back to what you said, Cole. That. You know, that's it's a that message of redemption that we that's mm-hmm. pointed out, yeah. you know, so great, you know, right here we have in, in this, you know, book, you know, and so if we I think we've pretty well established that mm-hmm. what God values in us is our eternal soul mm-hmm. because he created us that way. Right. And uh, I mean he gave the best of heaven mm-hmm. to save that. Mm-hmm. To save that part. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I guess you get down to a question of mm-hmm. We choose our worth to God. Sure, we do. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's a choice that we make of saying, "Well, if God valued me so much, mm-hmm. how do I value God?" Yeah, that's true. Free moral agency, you know. That yeah, we been... choose. All right, so I think you're right. It, it is a choice uh, for us then to make. Steve uh, used that term yeah, that, that we use, free, free moral, moral agency. agency. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Explain that. Well, I just think it's what God intended for us all. I mean, it's that uh, responsibility that we have for our own, you know, uh, obedience to God, whether we're going to 
<clears throat> we're not a robot. We're not a robot, and, uh, and no one can answer for us. We have to choose God or not to choose yeah. God. Yeah. You know, I heard someone recently espousing a religious person had a, a religious philosophy that basically he was saying that mm-hmm. nobody's going to be lost. Yeah. God's going to save everybody because he's a God of love. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know where he comes up with that. Because the truth of the matter is, God is a just God. Mm -hmm. And justice is, if we reject God, he said that in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. If you reject me, you'll surely die. Mm -hmm. And that was the dilemma that we talked about of sin. Mm -hmm. And he made provisions. He valued us Mm -hmm. so much. He made provisions to save us through grace, Mm -hmm. unmerited favor. But he said, we choose grace. Yeah. Yeah. We have a choice. We have free moral agency. Yeah, and these things are all, uh, you know, it's funny that, you know, just popped in my head here thinking about it. You know, these are all things that are free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it doesn't cost anything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all we do, all we have to do is take a step towards mm-hmm. him. Say, I want it. And we want it. Did we read uh, Second Timothy 2? Mm, I don't think we've read it there yet. Was, no. There was a passage in Second Timothy 2 that talked about, uh, he used the analogy or the comparison of uh, utensils in a wealthy yeah, home. there you go. You know, yeah. you, you have some, and, and I'd say today it's like, well, we have some really good china. <laughs> you know, we have some not yeah. so good, you know, everyday plates. Well, I'll read it. It says First Timothy 2, verse 20, where I'll start. It says, in a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and mm-hmm. some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils, utensils are used for special occasions. The cheap ones are used for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for an honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the master to use for every good work. If you keep mm. yourself pure, pure, what does he mean by that? That's sort of the choose the yeah. choice we choice have. Choice yeah. if you choose. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what we keep we're getting keep getting back to that Bible narrative uh-huh. uh, and the idea that. Uh, there was no one going to be lost. That doesn't fit Mm-mm. the Bible right. narrative. Uh, Jesus came to offer a pardon, but you uh, have now to, we have to accept it. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's the biblical narrative. That's right. So how do we choose to be pure? Yeah, yeah. that's well, it's obedience. That's, we that's obey what God said, yeah, and right. what does He ask of us? He's asked simply that we believe that Jesus Christ, is the Son of God, right. that He's the one that offers grace, yeah. Yeah. and we're willing to repent or turn mm-hmm. away from mm-hmm. wanting sin. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that doesn't mean we won't ever mess up again. That's right. But right. repentance means I want to set my life. A change of heart. i got to have that chart. I want to let Christ be in charge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we say, I want to be buried in baptism because mm-hmm. this old man of sin, I want to crucify him, put That's him right. to death, mm-hmm. bury him. We bury him in a watery grave. Right. And then he right. says we're resurrected in a newness, in, in a of, newness life. of life. That process you just described is the process of us accepting the pardon. That's Choosing right. to be pure. Yeah. The right. good news is. Yeah. The gospel is called the good news. The good news is there is a pardon available. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we have to accept it. We were looking at that, uh, was that the Supreme Court case, United States versus Wilson? Mm-hmm. And in that case, uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, George Wilson was his name. He was convicted of uh, robbery and maybe murder. He was actually offered a pardon and rejected it. Rejected mm-hmm. the pardon. Yeah, rejected it. Crazy. You know, you, you say that. <laughs> He's crazy. Why would somebody reject an offer of a pardon mm-hmm. for our sin to have eternal life? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. You know, if you understand and you value mm-hmm. what God has given us, yeah. why would you reject it? All right. All right. Uh, Matthew sixteen twenty four and 26, we'll kind of wrap it up with this. It says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up on your own way. Talking that's repentance, repentance. that you're talking about. That's right. Take up your cross and follow me. If you're trying to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's where the writer got his inspiration from in that oh, yeah. uh, song that we that we all read from. I think so. We've been trying to put a value on life. But what is, what's your soul worth? Mm-hmm. Uh Price tag is going to be high on that. Yeah. So eternal soul. What's the essential truth of my self worth? Yeah. Well, it comes from God. Mm-hmm. God created us, so we have value. He put us over all the 
all of his creation. Uh, then we messed up, uh, but he still valued us. That's and still right. loved found us. Found a way of redeeming us, yeah, didn't he? So much that he came yeah. to rescue us himself as Jesus Christ and offered us that pardon. Now all we got to do is just to take it, grab like, it. Like it's you a said, free. It's free. Act on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. act it's on free. it. Go Don't have to it. pay nothing for it. Yeah, that's uh, those. Are, that's the essential truth of our worth. I think. So it was a great discussion. And, uh, we're certainly already looking forward to our next one. Mm-hmm. Everything's been going great with our podcast. Our views are up, and we appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe anywhere you watch us on the podcast. And we'll be back soon with another episode of The Essential Truth. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Don't forget all the links to our content is in the description and in the comments below. Check us out anywhere you get podcasts, or you can check out our YouTube channel for even more content. Don't forget to subscribe anywhere you get our podcast. Thank you so much for watching the show. We'll be back soon with another episode of The Essential Truth.